I'm gonna go, so I'll make you host. Okay. All right, you're all set. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, Bye Athena. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing that we have a quorum, I am calling the August 20th, 2020 meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 6.32. Uh, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee. I'm now going to call each member by name to confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Alyssa Brewer. Present. Percy Dumont, yes. Dorothy Pam. Dorothy. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. No, it's, I, I'm unmuted. Yes. <laughs> okay. Evan Ross. Yes. George Ryan. Yes, I can hear you. I'm here. Okay. I will be monitoring committee member connections and if necessary, we'll pause the meeting if we have connectivity issues. Um, we request that everybody be patient with the process. Okay, let's see if we have any, I don't think we have any public today, do we? No, we do, probably Art, I'm guessing. Hi, hi, Art. It doesn't look like he has his hand up, though. Art, can you put your hand up? I'm thinking not. Okay. All right, so moving right on. Uh, first on the agenda is the town manager appointments to the Human Rights Commission. Uh, we just have that one set today. Uh, the town manager is on vacation uh, this week, so he isn't in person to answer questions, but uh, Jennifer Moiston's here, who is uh, one of our community participation officers. She participated in the interviews and I believe you're staff to the commission, right, Jennifer? Yes, I am. Okay. So he and the town manager did offer to answer any questions in writing that we had, but to my knowledge, um, people didn't have questions about the, um, the recommended people anyway. Um, and so Jennifer, would you like to um, offer any information that you have about the recommended people who are Sid Ferreira, Cedric Gonnett, Elizabeth Haygood, and Erica Loper? Sure. Well, Sid Ferreira has um, been an HRC member for some years now, but he kind of is our, um, he holds the history for the most part. Um, he's our institutional knowledge when it comes to specific things in the HRC. He's also very well connected with uh, the Cape Verdean community, which is really nice when we're trying to um, do outreach and engage community members. Uh, Cedric Gonnett is, um, he's not a new Amherst resident, but he um, has watched a lot of the children in the community um, grow up. I know that he's coached football for two of my sons and one's in college now. So he's um, got a great relationship with the, the youth, which we always enjoy someone who can stay connected with the youth and keep us engaged with the youth as well. Um, Liz Haygood has been in the community for I'm going to say over 30, 40 years. Uh, she raised her two sons here. And um, she is in a lot of the different organizations that are going on now with racial inequality and racial equity. And is, uh, she brings an awful lot. And Erica Loper as well grew up in Amherst and went to the Amherst Regional School System and has raised her son in Amherst as well. And she is connected to the school now. So she's also another parent person who has a lot of um, roots to the community. Great. Um, and there's, a, you know, a, a blurb about each one of the people in the, in the memo, in the packet, if people are interested in looking at that. 
Do any of the counselors have any questions for Jennifer? Yes, I do. Um, there's a heavy school involvement. Um, okay, so um, Cedric Garnett is a presently a paraeducator and Erica Loper is a paraeducator, both now. I am wondering, is Elizabeth Haygood retired or is she still working in the school system? I think she's in the process of retiring if she hasn't already retired. Just the usual question that we ask sometimes whether people who are working for the town um, might feel constrained, you know? Mm -hmm. I think this group is, um, at least from my perspective, is a great group who's motivated and so a lot of the events and different things that happen at the HRC fall in my lap and it will be nice to have people who are ready to go and engage with the communities um, and be active and have lots of nice, lots of new ideas. Yeah, I would just say that I the people that I talked to about these prospective uh, appointments were all very much, you know, supportive and in favor of them. So um, that that convinces me that they good recommendations. Um, so I have one comment there. It, it sounds like a really great group and a positive group for the fun activities that you do, which bring attention to different aspects of the community and try to get us kind of intersecting with different groups, but would the group that is critical of um, Amherst police or police processes or whatever, would they feel that they uh, have no voice on the human rights committee? So, I mean, it's a really tricky topic and I know that, but I'm- kind of So, um, I, you know, I can't really speak for how anybody's going to feel, but I did at most of the events that I've been to that were, you know, funded by the the Black youth leaders and the BIPOC community and the Defund 413, I did spread the word that the HRC was accepting applications at that time. And so whomever has applied has applied. And I did, I did reach out to people in District 5, of which a number are in the BIPOC groups, and they were supportive. So I, I feel fine about that. Um, so unless we have other questions, um, I move to recommend that the Town Council uh, approve the Town Manager appointments for a two-year term expiring June 30th, 2020 for Sid Ferreira, which is a reappointment, for three-year terms expiring June 30th, 2023, Cedric Gonnett, Elizabeth Haygood, and Erica Loper. Do I have a second? Dorothy. Okay, roll call vote. Alyssa. Yes. Darcy, yes. Uh, Dorothy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Evan. Yes. George. Yes. Okay. That, that's a unanimous five zero zero vote. So we will forward that recommendation to the council. Probably will be taken up at their August thirty first meeting. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for attending. Oh. Sorry to take your time up. No, your no. Important vote organizing. <laughs> Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, on the agenda, we have, uh, on, under the presentations and discussions, we have listed three preliminary presentations of, of different measures that are coming up and um, Uh, so the preliminary presentations are as per our new review process, which requires one of us to present a measure to the committee to see if we have or are planning to have all the information we need in order to proceed. So first up was going to be the preliminary presentation of the long-term public way policy change 
uh, request sponsored by the council president, Lynn Griesmer. Um, uh, but in the meantime, Alyssa Brewer uh, volunteered to take that on and present it and would, you, what, maybe you can speak to that, Alyssa, your request to put that off for a while. Um, I could try. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm trying to do 40 things at once here, pulling up our documents. Um, in regards to that, I saw how full our agenda was already. And as Darcy had you know, sent us the email that said somebody should work with Lynn and you know, connections made, et cetera. But Lynn and I connected and I said, yeah, given how busy we're gonna be with surveillance technology and Lincoln, um, and given the immediacy of everything else Lynn's doing, for example, working on revising our composite town manager evaluation that we just met about earlier this week, and I'd said I didn't have time to deal with it this week. I asked Darcy that we put this off for another meeting or two to uh, give Lynn and I some time to work together and think about the, the recommended way forward that we would bring to all of you. So anyway, thank you for volunteering to do that, Alyssa. So we're, we're going to put that off to a future agenda. Um, so the second um, preliminary presentation that we have on the agenda is the Lincoln Avenue parking topic and Dorothy and George uh, had volunteered to do that and they had the opportunity to meet with Guilford Mooring, um, the superintendent of the DPW and um, they are going to um, provide our first actual preliminary presentation. I'm going to make a suggestion that written up a little history piece. Um, tell us, do bring us up to date on the history that I would talk a little bit about the meeting and then George is going to show you the uh, slides uh, and, the, and the numbers that they gave us. But I will talk about them before he puts them up a little bit. Okay, my question is, um, I mean, it sounds a little bit like you're making a presentation as opposed to the preliminary presentation. So you, I'm assuming that you're going to cover the questions in the process, right? Um, what you're I can't look at a list of questions and talk at the same time. I have taken notes, which I have in front of me. And I think that um, uh, the, what the, suge the way I suggested would work. And then if we, either one of us misses a topic, good place to say what about what about okay okay yeah well the one of the first questions is the need for doing this so George, I'm you trying to go by the book here our new process um, so I think that we don't need to get like deeply into what is actually being proposed but just sort of like overview okay Anyway, why don't you just go ahead and do what you were planning on doing? Oh, you need to unmute though, Dorothy. I am. I oh. am. So, um, if you look, you'll see there's no muted thing there. Uh, I'm unmuted. You can't. No, you're not fine. You're fine now. Oh, but now we can't, you, you muted yourself. You're <laughs> the need for the parking, when we, when we finish the presentation, you'll see what the need is because Guilford gave us some stat, some statistics, some numbers that showed us how you look at a road and to see what it can handle, All right? So that's part of the answer and the solution. The need is that residents on Lincoln have felt that it was very unsafe uh, for uh, residents and drivers because the road has not been able to handle two-way traffic and parking um, on one side and sometimes it's been on two sides. And um, there's also, which I'll get to later in terms of widths, buses and transit and trucks do use it too, which should require a larger width. So people came to us because there were accidents, uh, many accidents, um, near misses, um, people whose uh, 
little mirrors were being knocked off, people who felt they couldn't exit their driveway, and that was seemed to be a dangerous situation, partly because Lincoln is a heavily traveled road. So that the need was presented, residents came to us and many meetings were held and a presentation was put together because residents felt that this was an unsafe situation. So that's the need. Now I'll move it to George. So in a moment, I'm gonna share the screen. Or I'm gonna try and share the screen and we'll look at the maps that show the current parking in that area and um, just give you a very quick sense of what we're proposing initially and get some feedback from you. Um, as Darcy said, we had a conversation with um, Guilford and with uh, Chief Livingstone and um, was very helpful. Guilford sent us some materials that we'll mention uh, later in, in our initial uh, presentation here. A um, little bit of history. This, Lisa knows this very well. Back in 2015, very similar proposal was uh, put forward. I think it was actually planning that put it forward. Um, and there were a number of public hearings and the select board at the time listened and finally decided not to adopt what the planning department had recommended, um, which would have pretty much provided, given what um, the residents are now requesting. Um, and instead there were a number of uh, other smaller changes made to um, uh, various intersections and, and rights of way just to give a little people a little bit more space to, to turn and so forth, but it was, um, the, the planning department, it's in the, the documents that Darcy put in your folder. I, I don't imagine you, I mean, you've seen them before because they were given to us at the public hearing. Um, but in those documents is the uh, 2015 um, uh, presentation and, and proposal by planning. And um, so this has a history. Um, and I'm sure it goes back, probably Alyssa could say it probably goes back a lot farther. But the, in the more recent history, um, in 2015, proposal was uh, was made um, and was not acted on. Um, the select board decided that they did not want to accept that, and they made some other uh, minor changes. Um, so fast forward to 2020, um, we've all been through this. We, I think, you all remember the, the public hearing quite well, and so the residents have come again. It seems this time motivated by some changes on Lincoln in terms of uh, people using it more frequently for parking um, access to the university and perhaps some to downtown. So um, we had this conversation with Guilford, we had this conversation with Scott. And so I'm gonna try and share the screen if I can. Let's, is that, so I'm gonna hit share screen and we'll see what will happen. Um, Maybe only the host can do it. Well, it's, it's showing it as an option for me. And so I'm going to hit screen yeah. and we'll see what happens. You should be able to do it. Um, and then I'm gonna hit this, which is, okay. And if you should see a map or part of a map, um, and if I don't hit the wrong button, I'm going to slide it a little bit. So this is the existing parking for the north end of Lincoln. That is the end um, that is closest to the university. And then we're going to, there are three separate maps that we're going to look at. Um, red, just to orient you again, just reminding you is no parking. And uh, parking prohibited Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. is the yellow. And the colors that we're particularly going to be concerned with are going to be yellow and green. So green is unrestricted parking. Yellow is restricted where it's prohibited Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. So in, in essence, what we're going to propose, no surprise here, is changing, um, excuse me. So we see um, yellow is eight to five, and that is from Fearing um, all the way to McClellan. Once we reach McClellan, oh, for God's sake, sorry. Um, okay, this is the second map. Once we reach McClellan, um, yellow turns to green. 
on the um, eastern side of Lincoln. And on the western side, as you can see, there's no parking permitted. Um, and what we're going to propose is to change uh, green to yellow. In other words, change um, unrestricted parking on the eastern side of Lincoln to restricted parking eight to Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. Now, that raises, as was pointed out in the uh, meeting, that raises the question of sunset. So you see sunset here to the west. Um, it is unrestricted on both sides. Um, and so the concern is that there may be spillover. In other words, people may simply move one block over and continue to use, they'll use sunset as their parking. Um, so again, the suggestion is to, as I said, basically changing green, green to yellow uh, to make both sides of sunset um, restricted Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. Uh, George, wouldn't it be the west side, no parking, wouldn't it be to mirror Lincoln that would be red on the west and green, a yellow? On one, one could do that, but I think um, traditionally the street has not been um, heavily used. It's not a uh, minor arterial, which is I think the term that Guilford's, uh, the DPW uses and I believe applies to Lincoln. It's not a major road, obviously, but it's called a minor arterial because it's used for people who want to get from um, Amity and or Northampton Road to the university. They can't, they don't use Sunset because it, it, it basically ultimately dead ends. And so you'd have to st turn it down and go up to, to Lincoln anyway. So traditionally, it's not been a street that's been heavily trafficked. And traditionally, it's not a street that's been heavily used for parking. Um, if you were to, and we're trying to make a minimum number of changes. So again, you could make it mirror Lincoln if you wished. Um, the proposal at the moment, just for your consideration and, and just to get the conversation started, um, is to change both sides, change green to yellow. Um, clearly, there would need to be outreach to all the residents on um, Sunset. So that would certainly be something that would have to be done before any kind of change like this could be um, moved forward. But that's, at the moment, that's the proposal. Okay, that's the middle map. As you'll see, all the other streets, um, minor streets are yellow um, in this area. So um, they are all restricted parking. It's just um, Lincoln on the Eastern side in this stretch and then sunset on both sides. So I wanted to add something. The, the chart that, um, that I, I'm able to access it, I was able to access but not to print it, so I don't know if George can show it, it's an Excel sheet that lists the width of every street and I- Dorothy, why, do, why don't we get to the widths a little later? That raises a whole nother set of questions. Um, so right now I just wanna show everybody the map and show them the layout. And then yes, if you could address what Guilford told us about street widths and um, that adds an, a level of complication that's very important. But I think for the moment, let's just finish with the map. This is the third map. This is the Southern end of Lincoln, which um, if I can get it in the screen, I hope you can see it. I can see it fine on my computer, but I have no idea what you all are seeing. Um, oh, that's good. If, if anything. Um, but on the southern end, at the moment, you can see green um, uh, on the southern end of Lincoln um, on both sides um, with certain areas uh, with setbacks at the intersections. <clears throat> and again, what we're proposing is to turn green to yellow. Now, in the 2015 um, proposal by the planning department that I mentioned earlier, this whole area <clears throat> was, was proposed to become a red no parking at all. <clears throat> and then in the Lincoln section, that section above, the, the middle map, that would have been eight to five. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, it's parking on both sides. Um, and we're proposing again that change the green to yellow. 
And that's as far as we want to go, or that's at the moment what we're suggesting. We're not going to touch Kendrick Place, but that is um, obviously a place for some consideration, um, whether that should be left as it is. I think it, the there are a number of residences that residents there. It's not a through street. Um, it's a place that you know the traffic flow is obviously not much. People either to drive onto it to go to their residence. Um, or they drive onto it to park and walk up to town. Um, so at the moment, we're not touching that, but that would be a potential uh, area for uh, consideration. Um, so that's uh, what we're proposing um, initially, just to get things started, essentially changing green to yellow, um, the length of Lincoln and changing green to yellow on both sides of sunset um, parallel to Lincoln. Um, and now, Alyssa, had her, Alyssa has had her hand up for a while. Sure, yeah. Thank you, I know this is hard. I've literally had my hand up the entire presentation because I'm really confused about where we are. Um, I appreciated what Darcy said at the beginning of the item, which is that we should be following our process. Mm -hmm. I agree that it's a brand new process, but I think the overview was helpful, even though it wasn't done according to the process, it was an overview. What I'm trying to understand is, I have now heard you say several times, turn green to yellow, to turn the, where's this written down? I can tell you that. Because I don't see that this was in, the packet for today. And so I'm not sure why we're talking about a, I understand the, I understand the overview of the history. I don't understand why we're not talking about a proposal, which we finally heard several minutes into the presentation was probably a proposal, but I don't have that written any place that I'm confused about. I appreciate us pulling all this old history over, but none of this is new information, right? This is all the information. I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm trying to understand what we're doing here today. If all we're doing is catch is reminding people of what we did at previous town council, that's cool because it's good to be caught up and a lot of people who are watching this might not know that. But as a person who was there, I'm not seeing anything different and I'm not seeing a written proposal anywhere except what I'm hearing as part of the verbal presentation. Am I missing a document somewhere or what am I, what am I not getting about this? I have my hand raised. Uh, yes, I, I, um, I think that normally if, if someone is designated to do the presentation, you can actually take charge during this part. So you can decide whether George or Dorothy wants to uh, take charge here. I may regret having said that, but. <laughs> you, can always, you can always step in as chair if. if right, yeah, you know. yeah, no, I just yeah. think that. I mean, this raises a very good question. Um, this is the first time out of the gate. Um, I frankly haven't had time to sit down and do anything, believe it or not. Um, I'm sure all of you have been very busy too, but um, so maybe part of what we are learning is that uh, it's expected uh, quite simply, matter of factly, that in addition to a kind of oral presentation, just giving you a sense of, of what uh, is, we need a written presentation that basically says what I just said, that um, given the history, given the presentation to the town council, um, we're proposing to change, and then I would have to write it uh, in a slightly more precise way, we're proposing to change um, these sections of Lincoln and Sunset to restricted parking Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. Um, and we can do that. We can stop this right now. And um, when I get five minutes, I just got home literally from a vacation. Anyway, it's not, that's beside the point. Um, if, if we need a written, if we, it's part of the process is a written presentation at the initial, whatever we're calling this, preliminary, then um, we should stop. And um, Dorothy and I will sit down when we have five minutes and we'll, we'll try to, we'll put together something written and we'll do this again. So uh, I did ask Darcy whether we could make it an oral presentation at this point or whether it needed to be written. I look at the, what we have written and it does not say that the preliminary one has to be written. Uh, and I have not, I have more information to share with you. Uh, our aim was to let you know 
what has happened, what happened in our meeting with Guilford and, and uh, Scott, and the next step where we get input from you because they are very willing to come and speak to the group. And so the biggest decision besides giving us information and different uh, thoughts of things to look into would be the decision of this group whether we want to have more discussion or more uh, the next week meeting, or whether we want to have uh, Scott and um, Guilford to come before the committee. As I say, they, we were careful to not ask them if that would be a burden and, we, and they said, oh no, they want to come. So that's where we were. And um, if it has to be a written report, then I guess I don't see that as a preliminary presentation. Uh, it's getting awfully formal, but you know, I, we can take a vote and you can vote to do it that way if you want. I mean, I think from the point of view of the committee, um, it's not an unreasonable request to have something in the packet that gives them an idea of what they're going to be hearing and seeing. Um, I understand Alyssa's concern seems a legitimate one. Um, I think Dorothy and I were hoping to do it somewhat more informally, um, but I can certainly see that that maybe in the future, and including this presentation, we need simply to have something a little bit more um, formal written presentation states, you know, what we are considering, um, which, as I said, would pretty much be what I've just shown you. Um, and Dorothy and I were thinking at this point, we'd like to get a sense from you all what um, you think. And if what you think is you need to have something in writing, then that's where we'll go next and we'll come back and try this again. If you think that you can offer us some uh, constructive, thoughtful comments based on what I've just said and what Dorothy said, and on this one little map in front of you, um, we could uh, proceed. Um, but I think we probably now need to hear, um, I mean, I think Dorothy has one thing she'd like to say about what we heard from Guilford and um, particularly from Guilford and what we got in terms of information. Yeah. Maybe at this point, we just need to have the committee decide what they want us to do. George, can you can you see the hands from where you are? Or no, I cannot see anything. I just see the map. Okay, I'm happy, I can see faces. I can see faces. I'm happy to call on people. Um, Evan, you haven't spoken before. So um, I think I'm I'm having maybe this is because I was out in the sun all day. A little trouble following. <laughs> um, my understanding going into this was what was being presented was just a refresher of what the town staff had presented but it now but my understanding now is you are presenting something that is different from what town staff presented that's correct we're going a little bit farther just and so right. I, I think with that in mind uh i we're talking about um uh, oral versus written but for me be this is really a, a maps issue <laughs> um I think all the maps we were provided last time were really useful. I'm having trouble. You're showing us this map and you're saying, okay, look at this map, but pretend that this color is this color and this color is this color. And I've already forgotten which colors are which colors. I, I, it's my understanding is the map we're looking at, you want to turn everything that is on the screen right now, everything that's green would be yellow, correct? Yes, that is correct. And yellow is restricted or no Eight parking. By Eight. Monday through Friday. That's correct. Okay. I think that's literally just the clarification that I needed. Right, I understand. It and was there, and and you're not proposing any. What about the no uh, the other part of Lincoln? Anyway. Well, the northern end already is restricted. The southern end, um, again, we're proposing changing what is now unrestricted green on both yeah. sides to yellow. Yellow. So basically, everything that's currently green on any of these maps becomes yellow. At, at the maps you're seeing, that's correct, except for Evan, um, when you come down to the bottom map, except you're, also, you're seeing Dana Place, you're seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. The street, obviously to ignore that, and you're seeing Kendrick, which for the moment we are not discussing. So yes, just Lincoln, green to yellow, and Sunset, green to yellow. Okay, thank you, I just needed that clarification. No, I understand. But Evan, I mean, I really, it's a fair question. Alyssa raised a good point, and it's for the future of how we work. Um, how important is it at a preliminary presentation, and I'm asking this in all honesty, how important is it to have uh, what a one or two paragraph description of a proposed uh, of a proposal, but you know, preliminary proposal um, that you would see in advance, or you'd be in the packet, 
and it wouldn't be buried in, you know, I mean, the, what Darcy's done is great, but as you all know, that Lincoln packet is full of stuff and only a madman would work their way through the entire thing. So you'd need, um, you'd have an identified written proposal and then I just couldn't get to it. And I'm not sure I could figure out technically how to get this map into that uh, document, but that's what you should have. You should have the, the maps and you should have um, the proposal in one piece and uh, so that you can look at it in advance. And that's the way I think it probably should work. But Dor Dorothy and I just haven't been able to, to get that together in time. So we're doing it informally, orally, which again, the question for you and, and Alyssa's already raised it and for Darcy um, and really for also for the two of us is, is that adequate um, or should there be something a little bit more formal so that at least in theory, um, you could read it before today's meeting and you wouldn't be completely like, oh, so that's what they're doing. Um, that's what they're proposing. Yeah. Um, so, I, um, Alyssa. Thank you. And, and I appreciate you filling all that in, George, because again, I'm not trying to be the bad guy here. We're all incredibly busy. And so I think we need to rethink our process mm -hmm. that we just barely adopted as to how realistic it actually is, because in no way, shape, or fashion did I ever agree that those questions in preliminary presentation of a measure would only be addressed orally. Because okay. if I'm hearing them for the first time, now luckily, George, you did a great, you and Dorothy did a great job explaining it. In this particular case, we're all familiar with what happened before. And it was great to have a refresher of, as you said, you could talk about it for hours. And so a refresher of the particular high points right. of the decision-making over time. But now I'm supposed to process that sitting here at this meeting in order to tell, in order to contribute to a conversation by the TSO that says the additional information we need is X, Y, Z pieces. Right. Otherwise I'm gonna have to stop today and say, now I have to go think about this before the meeting, which to be fair to me, I asked for at our last TSO meeting. I asked for a commitment from you and Dorothy to do this. And so I understand that that didn't happen, just like Darcy had originally thought we'd talk about public ways today. Real life intervenes. But then we need to think about what our process tells us for when real life intervenes. Because I would argue that arguably in this case, we know enough about it, plus we had all the refresher materials, that we could possibly do this on the fly for the next section. But what I don't want to hear is that we treated someone who's not as, you know, who this is a very, I would argue this is a very isolated case. And so when mm. somebody else comes in and gives me a very impassioned, exciting summary verbal Right. Because they didn't put anything in ahead of time, I'm be like, "Well, this ain't like Lincoln, baby." <laughs> so I'm, I can't, I can't process this this way. I, that's right. what a meeting's for is to be able to then offer input. Right. And so I, you know, it's our first time out, right? And that's there was right. I mean, that's number right. what's required and right. what I specifically asked for. What couldn't happen due to timing? We weren't told couldn't happen due to timing. We weren't given the option of saying. Should we postpone? You know, we're finding that this isn't going to work, um, or, or you know, what do we as a group want to do with that? Because I don't want to say to the next people, well, I know we cut Dorothy and George some slack, but we're going to hold you to this particular thing. And if we're not going to hold them to it either, because now we feel bad about the precedent, then why do we even have the process? Right. So, I, th I think, I think and, and I just want to finish with saying. The paragraph you were talking about, George, is exactly all I mean. I don't mean like a big honking report. Right. I mean like a paragraph that just right. hits all the things you eventually right. said just right. in a paragraph because right. you, the public sees it, yeah. this right. Right. and they're going, what are they even talking about? Like, that's a lot of cool Lincoln stuff. <laughs> but what, yeah. What's the I, thing? I think that I, I can't imagine that we don't all agree that when we're putting forward a proposed measure as it's called in our review process that it's going to be in writing. Okay. That it's going to be a proposal in writing to us. So I'm assuming we all have consensus on that. You, you um, in the preliminary to me, a formal proposal is in writing. Well, it's the preliminary presentation is just 
a presentation of what the formal, what, what the proposed measure is. There's more to the proposed measure you haven't even heard. That's why I thought. Why don't you, you I, I think your hand's been up for a while, Dorothy. Why don't you, you know, I was confused because I, I had the, an understanding that that the proposal was actually coming from Guilford and it had something to do with the width of the yeah, that's information uh, that he's given us. Yeah. So, uh, just his background, just you know, and it actually raises a question that we would like to raise with you, but maybe it should be postponed to to the next meeting where you have something written in front of you, because at the council meeting, you know, the alternative was, you know, you can't act. The, the thought was, by more than a few, you can't really deal with Lincoln without thinking about parking in general, and so. Um, the, the other consideration is is thinking about uh, the parking regulations across the town, um, and that's where Guilford's information um, was was valuable because what he gave us is something that is townwide. Um, it creates some other issues, but one response to this is: look, can't deal with this right now. First, you got to deal with parking all over. Um, you got to get the regulations clear: what's allowed, what isn't, and then apply that to various cases rather than do it piecemeal. Um, and so that's, but again, maybe that's best discussed when you have something in writing in front of you, um, including uh, what Guilford gave us. We could add that to the, uh, to the to preliminary uh, presentation in a, in a written form. I think you're gonna find most of it's just, you know, numbers and streets. Yeah, well, can we hear speak about, yeah. Hear from Dorothy. She's been waiting patiently. Go ahead. Well, um, okay. Guilford brought up first of all. He talked about widths and the the the, the preferred widths and what Amherst feels comfortable with. Twelve feet, one car to travel. Twelve more feet, two lanes of travel. Ten feet parking. That comes to thirty-four feet. But he said that they're comfortable with 27 to 28 feet. In other words, they don't need quite, that's the, maybe the desirable 34 feet for two lanes and one top parking on one side, but they can get along with 27 to 28 feet. And then the chart, the Excel chart, um, gives you the foot measurement of the streets that we've been looking at. And you'll find that they're nowhere near 27 or 28. Um, in this area, um, Lincoln is, um, 24 um, to 25 feet. There's one small block where it's 26 feet. Uh, sunset is 22 to 21 to 22 feet. Okay, so sunset is a little bit smaller. Then most of the others are 21, 22. Um, they're very narrow. So according to their own standards, it is not safe to have two lanes of traffic and one lane of parking. But as Gilbert said, it's never just the foot measurements. Traffic is also a consideration. And he was debating whether we needed another traffic study to, to, with a consultant and getting a grant for that, which was something he didn't see as being too difficult. But then he said, maybe we should go to the Schreiber plan, which is, what about my street? And High Street is, um, let's see, um, about the same width. It's 23 feet, okay? So there are a lot of other streets in town which according to the um, rules that uh, Guilford has adopted, which he thinks are safe for the town, cannot take two lanes of traffic and parking on one side. They certainly cannot take parking on two sides and two lanes of traffic. So that was the question. Did we want to kind of do a more holistic look at this? And that's what I wanted to ask you so that you'd have time to think about it. So I don't, you know, before George and I write up this huge report, we wanted to present to you the local impact of, of the Lincoln streets and George's change the colors. And then the question, do we want to do what was brought up at the town council meeting, not just look at this area, but apply the criteria with um, adjustments for traffic flow and whether transit goes through. Um, because you have to add even more feet if, uh, if, some, if transit or trucks go through. So. Um, which means that's that's part of Lincoln's problem. I'm now and then you see a, a bus and you say, what? I can't believe that's on the street, but it is there because it's a main thoroughfare. 
So we really just wanted to get feedback from you and then to see did, what you wanted from us, whether you wanted us to write it up firmly, whether you wanted Guilford and Scott to come to the next meeting, um, or how you wanted it to proceed. So that was the aim, rather than spending all the time writing something, um, present to you some of the ideas and to get some input, some, some response from you. Uh, so I, I hear you saying that there are a couple of alternate proposals here that it could be just limited to Lincoln and Sunset, or it could be a larger proposal that the town, that Guilford seems to want to put forward that would have some kind of consistent regulation that applies to all, all the streets or? It would be downtown. Traffic studies would mean that some streets are different than others. But Guilford would like to have a safe, safer streets. And that's one of our aims was, is to have safe, walkable streets and he realized that what happened at the Lincoln hearing after they put together the proposal and done a lot of work was that other people who lived on similarly narrow streets said, what about my street? And he thought, okay. Um, so he thought maybe this is the chance to do something that I think he's wanted to do because it might increase safety in the town. Um, so that was really the question to you guys, whether you think you want to be involved in that, which is a bigger issue, okay? It's, a, it's, it's going to take a little bit longer or whether you say, let's just see if we can just do the Lincoln one. And we, we really wanted your feedback. Is, I, I just have one question before I call on Alyssa, and that is, uh, my recollection is that when we got this referred, that the council asked us to look at it in a broader way than just Lincoln. That would be interesting. Is that, is that people's recollection, or do we need to look it up? I think we're going to have to look that up. Um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, that's, I that's one of the issues when things get referred. You know, it's not always, it's not at all clear to me often what the actual language is. Yeah. Or even I, if there is, I, I, even I, I, if there is actual language other than look at this, you know, deal with it. I have a recollection that, that we were given the direction to, to look at at least all the surrounding streets, not just Lincoln. Uh, I don't know about farther than that, but Alyssa? I agree that that was my recollection of the sense of the council at the time. I share George's frustration that we sometimes have a tendency to want to refer things and not say what we're referring them to do. I did not think that was the, the case in this item and therefore it should have been looked up to see what we yes. said at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, and and I think that, Dorothy, we're not actually at the cross purposes you think we are in terms of writing up a long report. We said this is the process after we beat each other up about it for several weeks of how to do a preliminary presentation. You did not follow that process. But what I would argue you did just do very effectively was give us an overview of the situation and say, in order to make our written one to two paragraph proposal of what we think is essential now, right? Given what we've learned, because you and George have been working on this since the town council referral. It isn't that you're just suddenly taking it up again, right? You've already had conversations. So this is actually the before the preliminary presentation discussion. And that's a perfectly viable thing to have. I, we didn't include it in the process, but I think it's a perfectly viable thing to have. But this, a written report is not just for something eventually, it's the process we have is to look at a measure. We haven't been provided a measure at all, except verbally in today's right. presentation. Yeah. So this is just like the pre-preliminary <laughs> presentation, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. is okay too. But again, just like when we left our last TSO meeting and I said, we're gonna have something in writing ahead and people are like, yeah, probably. Um, we need to know before the next presentation, right, what our next thing is. And we are way too early to be having Guilford come in when we don't even know what the proposal is, unless, unless, right, unless what we actually say is, you know what, it's so early, we actually do need that larger presentation from Guilford before we even really get to the point of 
what's work, what our process calls a preliminary presentation, because it is a very complex problem that you could attack from a number of different directions. So I, I don't think we're like wrong. I think we're just, you know, we kind of added a step in this case. And so that should inform what we decide next because we didn't, we can't really go through item four super well because we didn't have enough information to do that, but we could certainly start it and then you know, the next time you have a one or two paragraph explanation of what you're proposing now. Yeah. Dorothy, did you want to add something? Um, well, I thought Alyssa's question was very good. Um, and I think it's worth discussing um, because if we decide to go big, it would be helpful because Guilford's thought about this a lot. And he really knows way more than we're ever going to know about the streets and traffic. So I'd be interested in what other people thought, whether we want, because this is the proposal. We had a Lincoln Avenue proposal. Guilford is, in the meeting with George and me said, let's make it bigger. And there was, when the town council passed it, there was verbal statements of making it bigger, but they didn't mean high street. They meant just the contiguous streets in this next to UMass area. So it's bigger. I, I need to take this call. Um, Evan? So um, I don't know if anyone else has, has looked. So I'm looking at the actual referral motion. Yeah, thank you. Um, and it just says to refer the following proposed parking regulation changes to the town services and outreach committee with a report back and it's the specific changes that were proposed by Guilford. So, although I think a lot of the co town council conversation centered around we, we need to look bigger, we need to think about the larger parking ecosystem, the ref it, from my reading of the motion, the referral itself only included um, is very specifically uh, the three parking changes that we did not already vote on. In the, the downtown parking working group study? No, 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 for this. This is in the public hearing, yeah. Yeah, yeah so this was March 9th. Thank and you. the motion is to refer the following proposed parking regulation changes to the town services and outreach committee. And it's um, essentially, it's the, the ones that were proposed by Guilford less the ones that we've already approved. So we technically the referral did not include looking at the larger parking ecosystem, even though that was part of the council discussion. So what we do with that, I don't know, but just as a clarification on the referral itself. But, but didn't we inherit the, didn't we inherit the downtown parking working group as well, even though that wasn't part of that motion because that was a different conversation. Yeah. Isn't that why that's on our work plan? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it might be good to actually watch the council meeting and see. No, no. We, <laughs> no, no one should have to do that ever. No. That's mean. Not, not unless- 2020 has been rough enough. Let's right. not make okay. it worse. But, no one but, has to rewatch a meeting. No. Um, but I think what's becoming clear to me is that first of all, the referral should have been in in your hands. It, it, Evan has done what we should have done. Um, that referral should be cited. Um, we should be answering the specific questions in the process, even if they're just one word answers or short phrases. Um, and then we should be making a, as Alyssa pointed out, a paragraph, whatever, presentation in writing. And there should be a map in this case. Um, and then I suppose, there is the larger, we could, in the written proposal, we could say, and there's the larger question that could be considered of, you know, the larger parking ecosystem. But this proposal is strictly in response to the referral. And, and that, I think, you deserve. And so, um, and it should be in writing. And it should be in the written record. And you should be able to read it before the meeting. Um, and so, um, I think that, Dorothy and I have a little bit more homework to do um, before we can go much further. Um, because I think, as Darcy pointed out, um, and I think also Alyssa made this point, um, when people come to us, I mean, I have another, uh, from another counselor, 
uh, a request as just a resident for parking change on his street that I will share with Darcy and at some point I assume will make its way to this committee. Um, and there may be others eventually come along, but whatever comes to us, if we in the very first time out start making, you know, exceptions, mm -hmm. we, we're starting down the wrong path. So um, I do think, and I, Dorothy will speak for herself, but as listening to Alyssa, listening to Evan, listening to Darcy, it does seem that you have a right to have those questions answered explicitly, though we can do it orally, they should be written in the process. And well, you should have the referral. I'm sorry? The proposal needs to be written. Um, and you ever know, but I part of it is, yeah, I think it's also the questions and the yeah. referral. And, yeah. I think that was a very clear, that was a really good comment. The, a referral is a formal thing and I, I don't know what it said and if it's, I mean, when, when, when the notes are taken, was somebody being really firm and getting, saying, what is the exact referral? Or was it just kind of, oh, you can look into this? Well, Evan, Evan, Evan read the referral, so we can, we can quote it. Great. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. that we should, um, yeah. we should move on. And um, I, I hear George and Dorothy saying that they'll come back to the next meeting with a proposal of the measure and and specific answers so that we'll do like part two of the preliminary presentation at the next meeting. Does that make sense? Let's just call it part one. Okay, part one. And then we sh it should not come before you again until you have a written yeah. document to look at. Right, so yeah. will, we, will we expect that at the next meeting or? I hope yeah. so. I think now that my vacation is over, <laughs> Huh, such as it was, uh, but yeah. <laughs> and, so. um, but uh, if we don't get it to you, then it's not on the agenda. So it won't come to you until you have something written to look at. I, I am interested myself in hearing, uh, getting information about what Guilford is proposing to just, I guess I just have a little concern about uh, proposing a measure that might somehow be inconsistent with an overall plan. Um, but so I, I'm interested in, in hearing both myself. Alyssa? I was just going to say in terms of feedback, you know, because like, like Dorothy pointed out, one of the points, you know, the way she was viewing this is what, well, what's your feedback, the rest of TSO before we go down this road any further? And I think that's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. It's just earlier in the process than we thought. And so we're learning. And I would say that while it, you know, had we rewound time, arguably, it could have just been the referral that was from town council, as George said, would be in our hands saying, these are what the exact words said. Yes, I know they talked about other things, but these are what the words said. This is our proposal in response to that. If you, on the other hand, choose, I don't have a problem with if you choose saying, we did, that's what we thought our assignment was, but we were also thinking about the downtown parking working group and all the neighbors who have come to us since and everything we've been hearing at our district meetings. And so we, we have two suggestions to TSO. We could do A, or we might go down path B, and this is what our recommendation is right now. Since you guys have been putting a lot of effort into this, I think that's totally fine. If you want to, I don't want you to feel constrained. I just want you to be clear on what you're offering in response to the referral, and then just you've learned a bunch of cool stuff. So you might actually recommend we go down a slightly different path, and that could be your proposal, or you can even just make two separate ones. But again, short, just short, not like massive proposals. And then just be ready to answer the questions too. Well, in writing, so you have it and then answer yes. And yeah, that would be writing. great. It has That's to be great. in writing. That yeah. seems to be a legitimate and important part of this. Yes, Evan? Yeah, so I guess I, from like a process perspective, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this weird thing um, that we're muddying through, right? Um, because we were referred, we weren't just referred parking changes on Lincoln Ave. We were referred three very specific parking changes. And what George and Dorothy are bringing us are different than that. And so it seems to me like the council said, we want you to look at these three changes. And we're saying, 
okay, but two counselors on our committee, they like something different. And so we're going to look at those instead. And I think that we can argue why we're doing that, but it feels a little weird to me to do that. And I think Alyssa articulated that complexity nicely, um, but I'm still a little bit confused. Um, and I feel a little weird about saying, well, we referred these, but actually the sponsors now are George and Dorothy and they're gonna come forth with something different as opposed to maybe saying they have their idea of what to do and we have this and we're gonna have a presentation on two proposals and consider both of them and what we wanna do. I don't know, it just, it just feels, cause, and for me personally, I have my own idea that's not either of those two, right? So like, should I be bringing, I, it's just a, a weird environment of how we deal with referrals and I guess I'm trying to get some clarity on, on that. Well, um, George, hand here. Alyssa has her hand up. You have your hand up, Alyssa. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Exactly. Trying to keep it muted. Um, exactly. I mean, what Evan and I are both saying is, how do we decide in there? Like, at what point should we just say to ourselves? you know, you know, we're not rewinding time. So now, so moving forward, like we got this very specific referral, but we also heard all those comments that didn't end up in the referral. And we also have the downtown parking working group things. Like we can't pretend we don't know those things. So it seems like we're required by the town council to respond to the three things they very, the motion specifically said we have to respond to. But what does that response look like is the question. Is the response us just telling the town council next time we had a preliminary conversation about your referral on those three items and based on what Dorothy and George have learned since then they think that we should look at something bigger than that do you you know you can tell us if you feel differently about that but our our initial report to you is thank you for referring those two three things to us we're in process of looking at a bigger picture. And then the town council can say, no, I only wanted you to look at those three things. Pretend you never heard any of that other stuff. Or the town council can say, sure, have at it and let us know how that works. But it is true that at some point we have pretty soon, if we're not gonna do exactly what the referral says, we should tell the town council we're looking at something else. So we just have to, how does that fit? And, and we haven't envisioned that happening yet in our process. So fun for us to figure that out. But we yeah. do have to get back to them on that specific referral. And we don't want to go like six months into this and say, oh, by the way, we were never actually looking at the actual <laughs> referral you gave us. We decided to do a much bigger thing. Dorothy and George, just so we can try to wrap this up, do you think that you could integrate the question questions in the referral into the proposal somehow so that um, they are included in in what you're you're going to be you know bringing to us next time I think that's the point of having the referral and that's why I, I apologize it really should be in this formal presentation and what we're doing because it's that's what it's based on so right. yes it, it has to be in response to that I don't think we are then limited to just dealing with that we can on the basis of that, we should be able to make an argument um, either for just dealing with that, fine, or dealing with that and maybe doing something more, but it's based on that referral. So um, I don't think, I'm not worried about what we tell the council. We're in the process um, and we're not doing something totally different. We're not ignoring the referral. We're not, you know, just saying, oh, that's a stupid referral. We are using the referral as the basis for our, our argument, but we're not just limited to that, I don't think. Um, and ultimately, this is the committee's decision. I think both Dorothy and I agreed that, you know, whatever presentation we finally make, it's the committee that decides. And if the committee decides that, you know, three to two or four to one or whatever, that they just don't want to do anything with this, that's where it dies. Okay. So we have to convince you um, to, you know, and then you make, make changes. You may say, what about this? What about that? And hopefully by consensus, we come up with something that we're prepared to take to the council. Maybe in the end, we'll just say to the council, look, we, we chewed it over for three months, four months. We looked at this, we looked at that. We finally just threw up our hands and said, there's nothing we can do. We couldn't come to agreement. We couldn't come to consensus. Okay. Um, so I think we're ready. I think we're ready to move on. <laughs> 
I think that that uh, Dorothy and George, you understand what you're going to do for the next time. Can somebody please forward me the exact words of the proposal. That was a doctor's call. I had to take it. We'll, we'll, okay. will help you. we'll find it. We'll find it. He's given us the date. Okay. And we should have found it first. So and he found it in like five seconds. All right. So we're going to move on He's to human. man is not human. <laughs> the, the other, the third preliminary presentation, which is the surveillance technology bylaw, which um, I don't think we're going to have to spend that much time on because um, we actually already had a formal presentation a long time ago. Um, and we had a practice preliminary presentation, but I will go over it again. And because we didn't really get have adequate time for the committee to, to flesh out all the answers to all the questions of, of what we need to do. So I am just going to pull up the, um, the, 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 um, status document that's in the folder. Oh, wait a minute. Did I do that? I guess I did. Um, Minute. This does not look right. That's the color thing. Why don't I have all my tabs here? That's not it. That is not it. Um, I have it. Well, I have it. Yeah, it's in. It's in the folder. I can see it. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, it, surveillance tech bylaw status of presentations seven twenty two twenty twenty. It's yes. one of the three files that are there. It's the middle one. Oh, our viewing public gets to see our. No, there it's the middle one. That's it. You got it. All right. So this just kind of gives the background of what we've done up to this point on the surveillance technology bylaw. Um, if you look at number four, um, it was referred on May fourth. Um, and Mandy Jo did a formal presentation on June 1st with the other sponsor, Pat DeAngelis. Um, and then um, on June 29th, we tried out doing a preliminary presentation. Um, and Basically, this is the, the bullets are what we went through on that day. Um, and I think the only thing we didn't cover was because we hadn't yet adopted our review process. I think the only thing in the review process that we didn't cover was Alyssa's um, suggestion that we um, state the need. So, um, and we, we, can, we can talk about that. Um, but just to go through the bullets, um, the surveillance technology bylaw is sponsored by Mandy Jo and Pat DeAngelis. Um, uh, the, the reason that our, we're, do, we're doing it in the TSO is because under our charge, it's a measure quote, measure that may affect the provision of services by a town department. Um, and because the bylaw specifically is addressing uh, surveillance technology being used by the town. Um, it was referred to this committee by the town council on May 4th. Uh, we've already passed the report back time. Um, and um, as a bylaw, it'll also need to be reviewed by the GOL and KP law. 
our, our lawyer. Um, the sponsors would like to be heard on the proposal as soon as possible. Um, they specifically mentioned that they thought it was relevant to our conversations about racial equity because of the effect of um, facial recognition technology, the uh, unequal uh, use effect of using it. Um, we have um, t three documents now in the packet regarding surveillance technology bylaws, if we could count this doc document, um, and the bylaw and a fact sheet. So there's currently no town bylaw pertaining to surveillance technology and no state law, though Boston just passed an ordinance on June 24th um, and um, it's, uh, there are multiple bills in the legislature. So um, it's not known right now what stakeholders will be interested in this bylaw. Uh, possibilities include, um, Evan had said that he didn't think the Chamber of Commerce would be an appropriate stakeholder. That's, that um, is, up for discussion, but uh, they, they may not be. Uh, downtown business owners, customers, the ACLU, and individuals interested in protecting privacy interests. Um, I have spoken several times now with the town manager, uh, manager about getting staff feedback and, um, about the operation of the bylaw, and uh, he suggested uh, the IT department and the police chief as possible, either presenters or, you know, they could, they could weigh in in writing. Um, as far as best practices, uh, the sponsors modeled the bylaw after Cambridge. And um, in addition, Boston, Springfield, Northampton, Brookline, and Somerville have either enacted or are looking at um, passing surveillance technology ordinances. So we did discuss it a bit. Um, and like I said, Evan suggested that, that the Chamber of Commerce would not necessarily be a stakeholder. And um, that was when we were talking about the review process and George said the sponsor didn't need to be present. So um, we can uh, talk a little bit about the actual, I'm going to take this off now. Um, uh, questions or if you want to also look at the fact sheet, there's a really good fact sheet. Um, or if you want to look at the sections of the bylaw to get more of an idea of the need. But I think that's more of a part of the formal presentation. Um, so Questions? We could just go through the, um, we did already go through everything, but um, uh, we could, I need to ask you, I guess again, what additional information, if you think that we need anything additional other than what I said from town staff, um, or, additional stakeholder input um, or additional best practices, any of those things. There's a section of the bylaw that deals with the police department and a section that applies to departments other than the police department, but um, um, and, it, and it does have a special section about facial recognition. Um, so I think that we're probably ready for day two. Uh, well, we, we're ready to hear from the town. Is I think that would be the next step because we did already have a formal presentation, unless you think you need to be refreshed. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that the next step would be 
the town manager or somebody from the town coming to talk from, you know, town perspective about it. Um, and if we have any counselor questions, since we already did have one formal presentation, if we have any counselor questions, any, any, you know, having the sponsors come and answer the counselor questions. Um, so any thoughts at all? Because otherwise we'll just go to step two. Yes. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what order the hands went up, but I'm up, Alyssa's up, and George is oh. up. Oh, I can't, I'm not seeing them, sorry. Sorry. Uh, okay, Dorothy. I don't know what, what order they went up. Go ahead, Dorothy. That's basically it. Dorothy, Alyssa, George. Okay, Dorothy. I asked some questions uh, about, really about, remember you said you wanted to do this as a practice one. Okay, when you referred to documents, the, I, I want to, I had trouble finding which document you meant, and it was because I want to make it clear that if we're presenting documents, the title of the document is what you should use and refer to it. So this first one you have, you called status of presentations. I don't know what that means. Um, so I kept, I read the title says surveillance technology bylaw status of presentations. And then the two, uh, one and a half page thing from Pat and Mandy Joe, is that what you're calling the referral? The, the referral is the actual proposed by, bylaw draft. And um, you, well, this is. They have, a, uh, they have a fact sheet that is sort of a memo in support. Oh, that may be. Documents. I have a big surveillance technology bylaw. So I write the title of the thing at the top so I can find them. Then I have federal study confirms racial bias. I have NIST study evaluates effect of sex age and whatever. I've got memorandum proposed surveillance, surveillance technology bylaw, and I have surveillance technology bylaw status of presentations. So. Sounds like you have everything. What is the referral? Which one is the referral? The draft bylaw proposal. Okay, so that's Mandy, Joan, Pat, right? Yeah, it all, it's all Mandy, no. Joan. No, the proposal is the pro is the bylaw itself. It's not their right. memo. The memo right. goes with that. Yeah, they're the sponsors, though. But I had all the paper, which then I don't have it. Then you don't have the bylaw itself. I have the proposed surveillance technology bylaw, which is quite long. By from yes, it's about eight pages. Okay, that that's it. That is, that is the, oh God, I'm getting so lost here. Okay. You said we have to do the referral. Is this the referral? I'm just really needing to know the pieces of the, of the, of the work. So this is, this is the bylaw. So I should write the word bylaw at the top, right? They're proposing that, that, that we, that the council adopt that bylaw. Do we have, do we have that? They don't have to write a proposal if they're proposing a bylaw. They just are. They just write the bylaw and give it to us, and that's their proposal. But George and I doing on Lincoln a bylaw? No. Parking is not bylaw. No, it's a regulation. It's, You're, regu it, it's good to separate these things, right? Because we're figuring all these things out. Yeah. So theirs was a bylaw, and it went as a complete bylaw to the town council. And the town council, as, as Darcy has outlined in her, may I say, incredibly helpful status presentation memo from July, incredibly helpful, how we got to this point, right? How did we get here? And okay. the way that it's different, Dorothy, is that, you know, we don't yet have the how did we get here from you and George, although we heard it tonight, which is great. And you're not offering up a bylaw, you're going to be offering up changes to regulation of the public way, which are gonna require hearings, that kind of thing, but it won't show up in our general bylaws. Whereas what Mandy, Joe and Pat have proposed and has been referred to us is an actual addition to our general bylaw. And so why is this called status of presentations? That, that was a memo from me, uh, Dorothy, just informational to this committee to outline what has happened with the surveillance technology bylaw since it was referred to us? 
I was just pointing out the different times that it has come up and that it already had a formal presentation. Um, so. Is this going to be the category of paper that we present? In no, no, you don't have to do that. That was, that was above and beyond the call of duty. Um, so, um, I really want to know, would you call it status of presentations? Or would you call it something else? I'm, I'm dying in paper all over my house is paper. So it's important to me to write the name of the thing at the top. You can just say, yeah, this, that's not relevant to the actual substance of the, of the, uh, proposal. That's just, that was just procedural. That's all just procedural. Um, I have to, so I'm going to add a question here. Um, there is a new aspect in terms of stakeholders. Um, I'm, unfortunately, I read it today quickly, but there is there's a, a some some place wants to have everybody who's got a camera register it with the police department, so that if a, and this was in the paper in the last two days or last week anyway, so that if there's a crime that they could go to you and say we'd like to have your footage. And I guess the ACLU or somebody is saying, maybe that's not a good idea. So um, there, if we're talking about surveillance bylaw, there's a lot of surveillance that's going on all over the place and private property and garages and whatever. And that, that aspect is something that should be included in this consideration. It's, it, it isn't though, this particular bylaw proposal it only is pertaining to uh, surveillance by the town. Um, so that's something that you could bring up when we're actually having the formal presentation when we're talking about the substance of it. Alyssa? So I appreciate that a huge percentage of our time at literally every meeting is going to be sorting out how we're approaching things and what we're calling documents and which documents we get when and eventually we'll become a well-oiled machine and then we'll reorganize our committees again she said sarcastically but in the meantime Darcy's document was incredibly valuable and is in fact absolutely essential to the TSO process in terms of how we got to where we are and what we have next to do. The only actual action we are required to report back to town council is as she clearly included in her statement, which was that we were referred this bylaw. The bylaw is the measure in front of us. What you're talking about, Dorothy, has nothing to do with this bylaw because this bylaw is just about purchases or, re or arguably redeployments of existing technology that the town has. So this is talking about, for example, as has also recently been in the news, the idea of grants for body cameras. This is one of the many aspects of this particular bylaw at this particular moment is as police are talking about body cameras, what's the town council's role? If this bylaw didn't exist, our only role would be to try and pull it out of any budget requests. It would not, what this bylaw says is this bylaw says you have to talk to the town council before you even apply for that grant. That would not be true if we don't pass this bylaw. If we don't pass this bylaw, the town manager can absolutely have his department go ahead and apply for body camera technology grants without any further discussion with the town council until it gets to the point where he might need matching funds or he wants to shift money around. So I'm not saying that's the only thrust of this. I'm saying in response to news articles, it doesn't deal with the news articles about asking people to register their personal property cameras so that the police can say, oh cool, that would be helpful to us. Just like it would all be really cool if we all just turned our phones over to the police so they could have everything too. But now I'm getting kind of cranky. So the other thing about surveillance, there are many other aspects to the surveillance technology bylaw, but body cameras is obviously one that's in the news. And again, without a bylaw like this, the town council has no say until much later, if ever, in the process as to whether body cameras get deployed in our community. 
I think one of the things, if I could then just switch to what I really intended to talk about, which was where are we? Because that's what Darcy, you asked us. Where are we with this? You know, we've answered since we've had a, a formal presentation, we've had a, a, a practice presentation. We, again, you know, this isn't that we're coming to this cold. This isn't a brand new concept and it is something the town council wanted us to report back on, right? So they want, they want some process, some progress from us, even if not a finished product is that I think the thing that actually enables us to move more quickly on this, now that we've kind of had it for a while while we worked out our process, is this concept that's described at length in the bylaw itself that's called a surveillance technology impact report. And because that's part of the bylaw, I think that's a critical, critical part of the bylaw. And that is what, by having that in the bylaw, that's gonna have the town staff do all the stakeholder outreach before it comes to the town council to tell us why they wanna make a purchase of a particular thing, whether it's body cameras or something else. If that wasn't part of the bylaw, then I would be more concerned about the community stakeholder outreach we do as part of our TSO process now, because if we didn't do it now, it would be too late. Whereas I think that this particular bylaw is very clear in demanding that impact report. And that impact report is where the town council can easily say to the town manager, we have a bylaw that says you're gonna do an impact report. You're gonna talk to stakeholders. You just told us you only talk to these two stakeholders. That's not sufficient. And then he can say, well, the bylaw just says a report. And then we can say, well, we meant these other things. But so that's where like the real discussion about stakeholders will take place in my opinion, as opposed to having in some other circumstance, us feeling like we as TSO have to do some immense amount of outreach now to community stakeholders before the bylaws put in place, because every time a purchase like this is going to be considered, staff is going to have to come up with an impact report. Now, the other thing that might happen obviously is that TSO could say oh yeah what Alyssa said that's fine that's let's move on Evan George Dorothy put all this input it's all great Darcy thinks it's all wonderful and then when it gets to town council the town council says you know that technology impact report is stupid we don't need that then I would say well wait I would have wanted to have other stakeholders be involved in crafting this thing but as it stands right now I'm feeling much less worry about ensuring the kind of stakeholder input we've talked about on numerous occasions both here and at town council because that stakeholder input is actually part of the bylaw once we pass it and it's not tso's responsibility it's the town manager's responsibility to convince the town council thus the community that adequate stakeholder input has taken place thank you um george Can't hear you. Sorry. Um, we had background noise. I shut myself off, which is probably a good thing in general. Um, first of all, thank you, um, Darcy, for doing this. Um, while bylaws and, and regulations are very different things, what you've done here is certainly uh, will give Dorothy and I a good model for addressing some of the questions that we need to address in, in our uh, preliminary presentation, but also just is very helpful to us. So thank you for doing this. Um, I just, a question for maybe you guys can answer this. Is there anywhere written down the current uh, location level of actual surveillance that the town does? It's probably in there and I just didn't read it. And if it is, just tell me and I'll go read it. Um, I'm just curious what, you know, do we have a list of all the places where we uh, surveil the public and we have cameras? Um, um, or maybe it's a very short list, it's a long list. Um, or is it just assume that there are some places where we do this? And uh, so I just a question, factual one, maybe it's best at the formal presentation, but if there's something in all that what we've been given, I'll go read it. But that question, just what is the current level and location of town surveillance? Um, that then leads to my third point, which is uh, I still need to be convinced of the need for this. But again, um, Alyssa's addressed that a little bit, I think with talking about body cameras and that the town manager could do certain things without this bylaw that perhaps we wouldn't want him to do or her someday, whatever. Um, so maybe that's a reason. I, I'm not at the moment overwhelmingly feeling that somehow we need to do something like this. 
Um, but again, maybe that will come up in the formal presentation. I'll certainly be listening all ears um, to get good reasons why we should uh, go to such great lengths um, to address what I'm not, it's not clear to me that this is a really pressing problem in Amherst, um, but that's just me. And I'm all, I'm willing to, to be changed or to be persuaded. Um, and that question of the need leads to the legal exposure. Um, we're already getting this with GOL um, from KP Law with the wage theft. Um, this one even more so, it seems to me, because it's fairly new. Um, there's no state law at all. And so we are uh, potentially exposing ourselves to a whole host of uh, legal uh, issues. Um, and we're just a small, we're a town. I mean, we're a city legally, but we're, we don't have huge resources. We don't have a solicitor, right? Um, so I am worried about the level of legal exposure when you have a complex bylaw like this that has all these moving parts that has not really been put out in state law. There's no state law at the moment that, that governs this. And, um, you know, so that's my just concern. So those but are my concerns. The preliminary presentation time is not going to be a time when we're, we're debating the merits, though, right? Okay. Good. All right. Um, so, uh, Dorothy? Um, yes, I think that I have very simple suggestion that the bylaws name be changed. Um, to add, and this is the tricky part, um, you're talking about only surveillance technology used by the town of Amherst. I think that should be in the title because things go around very fast and people, we do, this is not a general surveillance law. This is only about what is done by the town of Amherst, which, you know, so maybe just propose surveillance technology by law for town of Amherst property. It is tricky because People will think it means the whole town. We mean the government. Uh, otherwise, it's going to get us in trouble somewhere down the line because it's not a bylaw about all surveillance technology. Um, Alyssa? Can't hear you. Oh, that's, are you taking that's your a left, hand? That's a leftover hand. Oh, okay. So, no hands left. Um, I, what, are you shaking your head, Evan, because you're agreeing? Yeah, no hands here. I have no hand. <laughs> I look forward to hearing from both IT and the police chief on this. Okay, so let's plan on that for the next time, and um, I'll talk to the town manager to try to get that arranged, and um, I don't know how long that will take. I'll just let the sponsors know that, that their second formal presentation will be, um, at, I think at the next meeting, the only two things we have are this and um, and the Lincoln Avenue, right? Um, and we might possibly, I don't know, Alyssa sounds- no, won't ready. be ready. <laughs> so um, maybe I should, should get the surveillance technology sponsors to do part two of the formal presentation too, because, um, because we'll have enough time. I mean, that's uh, kind of my question. I'm sorry to, to speak. God order. Yes, but I just, thank you, George. Again, in terms of process, what what, what are we doing? I mean, right. it sounds like we're ready, and maybe we're not. I, I, we're ready to go to the formal presentation or continue the formal presentation. I don't know what to call it. Um, clearly, there's some people we want to hear from. Evan's points well taken. Um, isn't that is that part of the formal presentation? And we're inviting them along with the sponsors to to move this along, or is the the sense of the committee that we still have questions um, that are at a preliminary level? And so we want some people to come in to talk to before we say, okay, we're ready now to go. Because I believe we, don't we vote to go to the formal presentation? Isn't there, we actually have to make a decision to say, okay, now time for formal presentation. Um, no. We don't. It, it, so then second question, if that's true, is that what is happening next week or next meeting? Is it, is it a formal well, presentation or is we, it more chit chat? We said that we would we try to get the town people, the IT and the police department to come. That was the plan all along. They were going to come like two meetings ago. Um, and um, I'm just saying that 
that's possibly like a half an hour or something. I mean, I don't know. I can I can check with them, and I'll just I'll just see how much time everything's going to take. How mu how much time do you think you'll need for Lincoln Avenue? Well, I'm asking a different question, Darcy. Um, what I'm hearing, and I think I understand now, is that we're still in the process of gathering information. We're not yet ready to go to the formal presentation. So That's whatever what happens saying. next meeting is more of us gathering information, asking questions, da 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 da, and then we're going to then decide. Let's then go to the formal presentation. But what I'm hearing from you right now is, well, maybe we'll throw the formal presentation in too uh, if we have enough time. And I, I don't want that to happen. Um, if we're going to formal presentation, let's all agree. And that's what happens next time. If we're still in this process of gathering information, fine, let's all agree. So next time when I come to the meeting, I won't be going, why do we have a formal presentation? Um, so what I'm hearing is no formal presentation next time. More questions, we're gonna invite some people, more questions. That's what I'm hearing. Is that well, correct? That's what, that's what you're hearing from yourself, George. Yeah. So, um, what's the answer? Uh, that, that's what he's hearing from me, too. Okay. So, um, so what is he hearing from everyone else? So, so can I just refer back to our process for a minute? So yes. I think where we are, despite the fact that in some ways we've already answered future things, right? I think we are still in step one. And we are near the end of step one. We're in item four, right? Additional information needed. What additional information will we need from town staff and at what point in the process? So that second part of the paragraph sentence matters. What additional community stakeholder input may be needed and at what point in the process? That was what I addressed. Whether there's a need to research additional past practices in other communities, next steps, projected timeline. At this point, the committee may decide it has sufficient information and vote to move to step four. So I would argue that Darcy, that does not empower you to have the formal presentation at our next meeting unless the committee decides either by consensus or by voting to move to step four, which is what I think George was referring to just now. I think we, one path, might be to say, it sounds like some people have said we need to hear from IT and the police. At what point do we want to do that? Do we want to say that happens at the next meeting? And then after we hear from them, we look at four again, steps A through D and decide if we're fine. And then we say, okay, now next meeting after that will be formal presentation or are we looking at kind of a hybrid, which I would argue was what Darcy was saying, which was that because we've had so much information on this, would we go ahead and say, yes, we wanna hear from the police and IT, but because it says at what point in the process, we could do that during the same meeting, we're doing the, same, the formal presentation. So I think we have the flexibility, I think we tried to build ourselves some flexibility, that's how I perceived it at the time. And so I think we just need to decide as a committee, it sounds like Darcy's leaning one way, it sounds like George is leaning another way, given this particular scenario and where we are in the process, which path do we wanna take for surveillance technology? Do we wanna say the next meeting is hearing from, from staff and maybe something else somebody's been thinking about? Or is the next meeting about that and about the formal presentation because we feel like we've gotten far enough that we can move to step four and we'll hear from staff during the formal presentation. Yeah, I don't think that we're going to, from what I can tell from the town manager, it's not my understanding that, that the town has problems with us or anything. So I'm, I'm not, I'm assuming that, that it's not, going to be something that's, you know, that's going to flag the committee to say, oh, we're not going to do this. Um, but um, I'm just, we've gone through these questions in the preliminary presentation, which is basically information gathering and getting input from all of you. And um, so I asked you all the questions. We've already answered them once before. We got a few more answers tonight, and um, we know who we want to hear from from the town. We uh, talked. We we thought Alyssa 
suggested, I think rightfully, that we may not need to do too much stakeholder outreach uh, if we have that section of the bylaw that remains in it. And um, we're gonna hear about more best practices stuff from the sponsors. Um, so I guess my main, my main concern is just, you know, efficiently using our time in, in the next meeting. And um, so that's, and it's, I'm not, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I just would like to, if we have two hours and Lincoln Avenue is going to take one hour, that's my main concern. I just don't want to waste our time. I think this issue is not as easy as you think. So I'm, I'm looking at it. I can see how you read what's here, that we don't have to know what they would say in step four. We just have to know who we want to talk to. But whether there's need for re additional research, I don't feel I would know that until after we have indeed talked to them. So um, I, I don't see it as being that simple. Um, so that, that's where I guess I would like to talk to the people before the formal presentation is, I'd like things to be pretty much more lined up before the formal presentation is done, but. Hi, Evan. Yeah, I, so I might disagree from some people here. I, I think we're ready for the formal presentation because I would like to hear the formal presentation from the sponsors before talking to IT and the chief of police. Um, I know we have had the sponsors come in. That feels like it was about four years ago at this point. And um, I read the surveillance technology bylaw in full for that presentation. I honestly, I skimmed it before today's meeting, but I couldn't tell you everything that's in it. And so I, I actually think I would really appreciate a refresher from the response from the um, sponsors and the ability to ask questions. Um, my my suggestion would be with respect to Dorothy and George to push Lincoln Ave off a meeting and spend the entire next meeting just on surveillance and have the formal presentation from the sponsors followed by a discussion with IT followed by a discussion with the police chief so at the end of that meeting we can basically say do we have enough to make a recommendation or do we need to send, based on what we've heard from the sponsors, the police chief, NIT, do we need, much like we did with um, wage theft, to send the sponsors back to consider things and bring them back another meeting? But um, I, I think trying to do Lincoln Ave and um, surveillance, I, they're both complex. And I, and I worry we'll just, we won't be able to dig into either. And I kind of love to just get one completely off of our plate. And my preference right now is for surveillance. Um, just because I think that Lincoln Ave is a bigger question that's going to take a little bit more thought. So that's my suggestion. I endorse that idea. Um, okay, me too. Well, well, that's a majority. <laughs> and George. <laughs> Can't hear you, George. Sorry, um, I have no objection. I just want to be clear on what we're doing. And so again, that's why I, I'm just describing it to myself to make sure that what I think I'm thinking is in fact, what everybody else is thinking, which is we really are in the formal presentation stage and we are going to have a formal presentation continue next time. And we will have at least IT and the police chief present and to ask questions. Yeah, we'll try to have all and those I think things. the meeting should just be for um, this issue. I think that makes sense. And the only question I have is, when do we have the town, do we bring the town manager into this? Um, I, I would like to hear from him directly um, what his thoughts are, what his concerns are. Yeah, I would too. Um, uh, would, he, so would he be invited? I, I would be glad to invite him. Um, the, rest of the committee want him to be present along with the IT and the police chief? Sure. Um, he, I mean, normally he's going to come to our meetings anyway. The only reason he's not here is um, vacation. because he's on vacation, right? Alyssa? 
I actually don't think it's necessary for the town manager to come to all of our meetings as a, no. as a, as a base expectation. I think that's actually unreasonable. I um, but I agree that under many circumstances, he's going to need to be there at least for part of it because just like when we had OCA process, right, for appointments, but it was only for that part of the process and that had to be arranged. I don't think it's reasonable to expect that any town council committee necessarily has staff at it at any given time including the town manager himself. But this one, obviously we do need him and I appreciate the clarity around that because what I'm trying, I'm trying to hold us to our process, right? So items 4A through D, again, like I said, we have the flexibility of saying at what point in the TSO recommendation process. So I'm willing to vote to move to step four with the understanding of the following, that we are agreeing that we're saying we don't need some things to be decided before that formal presentation. And with the agreement that we are going to communicate to Darcy as the chair, who in consultation with the committee shall assist in preparing the measure for presentation by communicating with the sponsors. So she's gonna tell them what we said, right? Reaching out to the town manager regarding staff input, which she's already done and she's gonna just follow up on reaching out to relevant town and community stakeholders let's come back to that for a minute in a minute and d in some cases seeking input on best practices from other towns you've just assured us darcy that that's going to be part of the presentation so we don't need to reiterate that here you'll reiterate it to the presenters and it says we expect to receive the answers to the questions and the information requested prior to the formal presentation so we have to decide before we leave here tonight what we as a committee want Darcy to communicate to town staff and to, the, and to the sponsors what they have to provide us in writing prior to that formal presentation. And then they could say, oh man, we don't have time to do that. You guys asked for 50 million things. And that would like change the course of our trajectory here. I'm confident we're not gonna ask for 50 million things. It will not change the course of our trajectory and that's fine but we have to communicate to Darcy so that we don't second guess her at the next meeting as to what it is we're expecting under this preparation for the formal presentation. So we've said IT, we've said police, we've said town manager. Is there anything we're expecting Darcy to communicate to Mandy Joe and Pat about reaching out to relevant town and community stakeholders? Or is everyone else fine with the thing I floated earlier, which is that because it's an important part of the bylaw itself, as long as that stays in the bylaw, I'm not hot about insisting we have every conceivable stakeholder group have information in the formal presentation. And if we decided after the formal presentation, we still did need that before we made a recommendation to town council, we could decide it then. I just don't wanna be second guessing people saying, well, I thought you were gonna bring us this, but you only brought us this. That's all I think we're just at the stage right now is preparation for the formal present. First, I think we should vote that we're ready to move to step four. And then I think for preparation for the formal presentation, we just need to give direction. So we're, we're all about managing. Wait, this is not a vote to move to step four. That's, that's different. That's, that's if you're skipping the formal presentation. Um, this, okay. there is, there's no vote necessary, but if you, I would we really to, appreciate okay. it if you all would decide how you want to submit to me um, any questions that you have and by what time you would want to get those but, questions to but me. But see, that's what I'm confused by is because if these questions are not, this goes back to our entire functioning as a town council. The questions people have should be the questions that this committee has, which should be discussed at this committee meeting the question should not be what Evan goes home and thinks of between now and some date in the future. What I go home and think of between now and some date in the future, or like the other night when we were told, give George feedback in the next three hours before his next meeting. I mean, we, this is what we are supposed to be talking about as a committee is what right. is it that we want you to ask them to include. And we should tell you that right now. And then unless we get off the call in like in five minutes, go, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't say that. It's not up to me, Dorothy and George and Evan to have five different sets of questions. It's up to us to tell us each other right now, these are the questions we agree they will address. 
I don't think that we are prepared to do that right now. I mean, I think that if we're, if we're asking questions about the bylaw of the sponsors, I doubt if many of us right now are prepared to come up with all of our questions. Then why are we scheduling the formal presentation? We can't prepare for the formal presentation. We can't have a formal presentation if we didn't do the preparation step. I'm just saying that if, you, if we agree that we're going to look at the bylaw and submit questions to me by a certain date, then I can submit those questions to the sponsors. Um, so I don't think, and if they overlap, then I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll deal with that. Our but, committee's supposed to prepare for the formal presentation, not us individually. Right, but are we, do we want to go? I mean, I, I personally am not prepared to do that myself because I would want to look more carefully at the, at the, uh, at the bylaw. I, that means you're going to be asking them to provide answers to questions that you personally have or that Dorothy wants to ask them about recordings by private individuals, which is not a question this committee is asking. That's her personal question. I'm really confused. Right. So I think we'll, we'll be able to, to, uh, I, I think I can handle that. You don't, you don't get to do that. We as a committee do that. We as a committee decide what are the questions they need to be asked. The problem is that it's 822. Uh, Evan? Well, I was going to say, I mean, I, I think that my, my understanding of what we were doing was that we'd have the sponsors come in for the formal presentation. And based on our preparation for that presentation and what we hear in the presentation, we as individual counselors on the committee will generate questions that we will then ask of them during the meeting itself in open session at, in a public meeting yeah. and, and then hear from the town staff and then at the end of that if we have questions remaining then we will we can decide as a committee will you know this will all have been discussed in open session and say to the we could say to the sponsors, we're not ready to vote on this. Here's our outstanding questions. We'd like you to come back for a continuation of the formal presentation with responses to those questions. Yeah, it would That's work. still not answering step two. How do we do preparation for the formal presentation? Right. Well, I think that's only if, um, if we are prepared to put questions together to send to them in advance of the formal presentation. I, I, this is just drawing it out longer, that's all. I mean, No, if, it's a part of our process. It's not mm -hmm. that it's a pain. It's part of our process. What We aren't voting. We don't have a place that says vote to skip to presentation without doing the preparation step. It says in consultation with the committee. In consultation with the committee does not mean individual counselors send the chair questions. Right, but it can. No, it cannot. That's not what the words mean. Well, well, I think that they could mean that, but I don't, it doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. If you have questions now that we, that you want to put on a list. I think we can skip C in step two, which is reaching out to relevant town and community stakeholders. If, if one of the reasons for not using, the town not using or doing certain things with this surveillance is the fact that it doesn't read female faces and black faces very clearly and allows for frequent misidentification. I just don't see how we can't reach out to some, maybe the Human Rights Commission or some part of the black community. We have some women on the committee. We don't have any black people on the committee. I mean, they're definitely stakeholders. So I think we have to be sensitive to that. Um, and that well, name, name some group that we should be reaching out to. We've got stuff to do with black faces not being read well by this surveillance. I think that some of those stakeholders would be black people who might have had experience with surveillance. I, I, mean, I, I agree, but I mean, that doesn't tell me who to reach out to. Right. Uh, We're supposed to be giving Darcy direction and we can't just say, go figure that out, Darcy. We have to say, Darcy, we want this thing and we can't expect magic with our outreach community outreach people well we could outreach to the human rights commission what are we asking them to say see dorothy i think we I, I i don't understand dorothy what are we asking them to say we're not we know 
that fact about brown and black faces. So do we, are you saying we need the Human Rights Commission to write us a letter that says surveillance technology is bad for brown and black faces? We already know that. So why do we need to ask them to write that down for us? But although there's a problem, they wanted the surveillance technology used. If you're using people as an excuse for doing something or not doing something, you should talk to the people that you're talking about. Otherwise, we're just speaking for them again. Um, well, we have three organizations that have shown up at our town council meetings that I, I bet would weigh in on it. And they'll be very pissed if they're not asked. <laughs> you're just mad at me. Okay. Um, Evan? So, I mean, again, going back to our charge, I mean, our primary reason we exist is to look at measures that might affect the provision of town services. So uh, I guess my, my thought and my request is for our next meeting, just sponsors IT and police. And if at the end of that, we say, you know what, we really feel like we need to hear from some other stakeholders then we can do that. But since our, the basis of the reason we have this is, the, is it affects town services. And in that case, it's IT and police. I feel like that should be our starting point. Inviting more groups into that two hour meeting, I think is going to be overly ambitious. I think to as, as presenters, yes, I agree because there, there's only so much we can fit into the meeting. Um, I think the, Reaching out to stakeholders, um, I think, to some extent, is more about just notifying them that something is going on in the in the town and that they might be interested in. They might want to provide public comment, or um, but uh, not necessarily to be presenters. Um, so, um, did. Did people have other ideas about stakeholders, George? Not about stakeholders. So if someone wants to speak to that, I will wait. He didn't finish with the questions either. We kind of well, skipped. I, I will speak to that, but is there someone who, I, I don't think, I agree with Evan that we should proceed as we've already agreed. Um, we should not be, um, if we decide later we want to do this, fine. But for next meeting, I think we have, come to some agreement as to who we'd like to have present, including the sponsors. I want to go back to Alyssa's point, which is that um, it does seem at this stage that if counselors have specific questions that they want the sponsors to address, that that should be communicated to you in this public forum. Um, we could discuss, and maybe we should, whether there's also a, a way it could be done, you know, outside of this forum. But I think right now I have raised two. One is the question of legal liability and what thoughts have been given to that. This seems to put us in, I mean, I, I'm gonna have this question. I'd like to hear the sponsors respond to uh, the concerns about the exposure, legal exposure to us in creating a bylaw that pretty much is, is, is not, does not exist in state law. The second one is a more specific one. Uh, back to my earlier question, could I have a list or do we have a list or could I have some sense of what current surveillance is being done by the town? And maybe, as I said, maybe the answer is there and I just didn't find it, but that's a second question I'd like them to address if it's not there. I'd like to know what actual surveillance this town does um, in some in description, you know, how many cameras, roughly where are they? What do they do? And the second is legal liability. Those are two things that I'd like them to address at this meeting. Um, other counselors may have other questions and they should speak up now. Um, if after the meeting, three days from now, I have like, oh my God, I forgot to ask X, Alyssa raises a good point. Is it okay with you all for me to send, and Darcy, by the way, also ask them this, this, and this, or should I just, I shouldn't do that. And when we have the formal presentation, then I can as an individual. Why, why would you not be able to send me that when we do yeah. that with all of our other committees? Well, that's what I'm asking. So, um, that's Alyssa what our made, process says. Right. Alyssa's made the strong argument. And our process is the committee as a group agrees that these are the questions we want to be asked of whomever. These are the stakeholders we want to be brought in. 
these are the town staff people we want you to invite. And if Alyssa or I, four days later, says, oh, gee, what about so-and-so? And we send you an email privately, that says, and by the way, would you also invite X, Y, and Z? And so we show up at the meeting, and X, Y, and Z are there. We're all looking at each other like, why are they here? Well, the answer is because Ryan emailed you privately and asked you to invite them. And so I think that's problematic. And so if that's problematic, then it seems also um, the other is problematic. So I think Alyssa not has a point. It's not problematic in other committees. It's not it's problematic. Other committees. This is our committee. This is our process. No, we can't, we can't have a more restrictive process than the other committees. Have we have the process we yeah, have. Absolutely. Yeah. No, we can't. We should decide um, our own process. It, I, I invite anyone to send me questions and I will forward them to the, to the, uh, to the sponsor. That's not appropriate. That's not the process we agreed to. You can't decide to not follow the process we agreed to. Where's that process? We didn't ever agree to that. It says in consultation with the committee. The only way you can consult with the committee is in a public meeting. Darcy, let's say that three days from now, I think I really would like Matthew Charity to be present at this formal presentation. So I send you an email saying, would you please invite Matthew Charity to come to this presentation? And you think, gee, George, that's a great idea. I will. And then Alyssa, Dorothy, and Evan show up, and there's Matthew Charity. And they didn't invite him. They didn't, add, right? There he is. And that's not appropriate, it seems, right? That's just not right. So, other people have questions. Yeah, I have a little comment. George and I were talking about Lincoln Avenue and its checkered past, and we decided that our aim is to get our committee to agree, because we figured if we can't get a unanimous agreement from our committee, it's not going to pass the council. So I think that there's been some strong statements that we're really interested in consensus, and sometimes it does take longer. Okay, it's not the most efficient use, but it is, it ends up with a stronger, instead of redoing Lincoln Avenue every couple of years and having it go down in flames, we're trying to say, let's do this so it'll work. And I think that, you know, this is gonna be true for a lot of other issues. So we don't have to be known for speed. Um, so I, I'm, I'm agreeing with the interpretation of the chair or the chair's designee in consultation with the committee. Um, I'm sure that if something really big comes up or whatever, and something is done without consultation, um, that, you know, we won't all die. But our rules say we can't agree outside of public view. So that's the issue. Okay, well, does anyone have any other questions that I should be forwarding to the sponsors? Uh, Alyssa. Yes, my other question following, it like kind of follows on George's questions um, and, and Evan may have specific IT questions too, but the George question that I was following up on when he was saying, what technology are we using now? And I, I don't know how specific they're gonna be willing to give us, but I think we should definitely ask the question and ask for as much specificity as is normal practice to tell us. And then of course, when they get that, give us that information, we may decide we want more or different information. But the other part that I wondered about for technology, because technology is constantly evolving, is is there something um, the professionals, whether IT or police, have heard about, right? You read articles in the paper that they think, oh, well, if that happens, it's not covered under this bylaw. Like, is there some other emerging technology that does this bylaw sufficiently cover not only all the things we know about now, but things that are similar, is it, you know, is this bylaw too loose or too restrictive in terms of emerging technology? I guess that's my question. Emerging technology, is this bylaw too loose or too restrictive? And um, anybody else? Well, okay. I would I have well, three questions. Um, camera, the body camera thing, I guess, um, I guess I'd like them to somebody to walk me through how this affects that and 
how that would affect what the town does. How, how what affects what? As I, I read it in detail last time. I didn't refresh the details this time. You're saying, I think you said that they could not order body cameras without the town council's consent. Is that, did, I, did I hear that correctly? I, I would argue, it, if, if I read it correctly, which I may not have either, but it's that you have to have told us about it. You could still end up putting, you still could, you could like, you could do the presentation that it says, you could do the community impact report that it says, the council could say, wow, that's a terrible idea. And US town manager could still do it. And then when the budget decision came, that would impact our receptiveness to that particular part of the budget. But if it was just free grant money, then arguably it could be done without town councils because that's the executive power in the charter. But what this bylaw does is it says, we know we don't get to make all the decisions, but we want to have, we want to be informed. We want our community to be informed. There would be people who would argue, because we're not going to talk about the merits, right? But there would be people who would argue, you don't need this bylaw because you should never infringe on the executive that way. That might be an argument against the bylaw. But what this does is it doesn't actually give town council powers we don't have under the charter, but it does add to the information that's being provided out there about possible purchases, which without the bylaw would be up to the discretion of other people to tell us about. And you may or may not agree that that's necessary, but that's part of the function of the bylaw is to let people know that something's happening. So I don't know. Um, yeah. So how would I word that question about the grant? Grant money. Is it, is it maybe a confirmation that their understanding, how, what their understanding is of what I just said, right? Is you have the, does the bylaw just say you have to tell us, but you can still decide to decide whatever you want? Or does it actually place a con, an actual constraint? I think it just presents a constraint in terms of timing. I don't think it presents a constraint in terms of actual executive final powers. And maybe that's part of the legal thing that George is wondering about. I don't know if you want to put some more flesh on your liabilities concerns, George, that they can maybe try and answer for us ahead of time. Okay, say that again, Alyssa. Does this confirm your understanding that what? That the bylaw serves to inform the town council and the public of potential grant applications, potential budgetary expenditures, but does not prevent those expenditures from taking place unless we vote against an actual budget item. Which in the case of a grant that's free money, which is rare, usually they have strings, but if it's free money would be would mean it would never, in theory, it might never come to us as a council because we always are telling staff to go after grants, right? We never say turn down money. So. Um, okay, I, I, I might have to run that by you, Alyssa. <laughs> um, okay, any other questions? Because um, otherwise we'll just uh, um, go ahead. I'll get the, three presentations for the next time. I really appreciate that, Darcy. I just wanted to, I'm putting Evan on the spot if I could really quick. What does he want to hear from IT? I'm just curious. Like, are there specific things that we want IT to address? To be perfectly honest, at this point, I don't have anything. And that, oh, okay. and that is because I haven't actually gone through and fully read this for several months. Um, but I do think it would be useful to have them there because um, having read it or just in conversation with the sponsors, I see it as definitely possible, if not likely, that questions will come up that would be best fielded by IT. Okay. okay. Um, uh, George? As quickly as a matter of process, do you all feel we need to have a vote that we're going to a formal presentation? Um, or can we simply agree by consensus? Um, I'm just wondering. Because we're going to a formal presentation, this is my understanding for next time. That's what we're doing. We're moving yes. to 
step three. And, and it's not, it, Darcy's correct, it's not in the process that we have to have a vote. Right, um, we only but, have to have a vote if we're skipping past the formal presentation. Right. On the other hand, I think- we weren't quite prepared to do. Right. So by consensus, okay. I think it's agreed that we're moving to a formal presentation. Yes. That's my sense, good, okay. We're all on the same page, yay. And it's time to, to adjourn. <laughs> Uh, does pass, feel like it. Pass time to um, do we do we uh want to vote on the minutes um uh did 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 people get a chance to look at them uh, there were no amendments to the first set i amended the second set a little bit and the track changes um so um if do we feel ready to to um, adopt them? If I move to adopt both of them, will <laughs> someone second it? Because <laughs> um, I'm going to move that right now. Um, I move to accept the minutes of um, July 23rd, 2020 and August 6th, 2020, as amended. Um, is anyone prepared to second that? Second that. Uh, roll call vote. Um, Alyssa? Abstain. Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Abstain. Oh, dear. Uh, Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, you got plenty. You're fine. Um, okay, well, so we know what we're going to do at our next meeting. Um, I just wanted to make a brief announcement, and that is um, that I've been working with this new group in town called Zero Waste Amherst, and um, we, we um, are working with Guilford to... Uh, he, he um, has made a, a grant to DEP to, um, to use the local recycling assistant person for Western Mass to do research on best practices on um, hauler systems. So they're, they're looking at um, ha directly hauling and also looking at systems where the hauler directly um, contracts with the town rather than with the residents. Um, and, you know, different things, systems with curbside composting and um, pay, pay per bag or pay per weight. Um, a lot of different options that different other communities are doing around the state and also around the country. So it's very exciting and I hope eventually it'll come to this committee in some form or another, you know, I don't know when, but the woman who's doing the, the research is going to be doing it within the next like six weeks or so. So hopefully we'll all get to see the results of it. Anyway. Uh, George? Sorry, um, just quickly, um, as I mentioned earlier, I was approached by uh, actually a counselor with a request for a public ways change. I just want to know, my assumption is what I do is I forward that to Darcy and it goes from there. Um, is that right? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um. <laughs> so if you get a, I guess because I'm asking, if someone sends sure. one of us a public ways request for a change, it obviously comes to our committee um, my sense is I simply forward it on to Darcy and ask her to um, consider putting it on the agenda at some point, or at least reaching um, out to the sponsor. I guess so. Um, it, still if, looking for help if, here. What, if, what, what uh, I do? TAC were still in, in uh, you know, a working order, that might also be something that would go there, right? ECAC? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Tra TAC. Oh, um, right. I don't, I don't think we have, well, I think the fact that we don't have a process for public ways yet is the public way is why you don't know the answer to the question, George. I think it goes to Lynn. 
And then Lynn calls Darcy and says, well, since we don't have a process yet, what do you want to do with this? And I think it's going to, that's what was going to happen until we have that process is it's going to be on a case by case basis. If okay. TAC had been meeting regularly, right? Cause we weren't having a pandemic and TAC had been meeting regularly through all this. They might've already gone to TAC. Right. And if we had more time, we might have our public way policy ready, which we don't. Yeah. So I would think this is currently a Lynn and Paul and Darcy question as to given we don't have any of those formal processes ready, what should we do next? I don't think it's, it's on Darcy to schedule it at this committee meeting. I think it's you, it's Darcy talking to Lynn and Paul about well, what are we going to do? Maybe, and maybe TAC can do it. Maybe TAC is the, is the place for it. You can okay. forward it to me and I can bring it up at the next meeting that I have with Paul. Okay. All right. um, anything else? Um, is Art, I wonder if Art is still here. I don't think so. Oh, um, is. Art, I'm, I'm amazed that you're still here. Uh, but it doesn't look like he's got his hand up um, for public comment. Let's see. Oh, wait a second. Oh. Um, so um, yeah, no, I think that's I think that's it for tonight. No items not anticipated by the chair for eight hours in advance. So I'm going to declare us adjourned at eight forty-seven. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Good night.